hello again everyone. Um, what we'll do in this lesson is we will um, go a bit further with this uh, retro style look that we created um, last time and we will add a grunge texture over the top and add some text to it so that it gives it like a, a much more of a, a faded um, older style look and to me this actually looks like a piece of stencil graffiti that you would find um, on a wall yeah, in a city or somewhere like that. Okay, so in order to create that, um, we're going to, first of all, um, we are going to, you'll need to find a grunge texture. And now I've just gone to the Pexels website, which will give you some free stock images. And I just typed grunge texture in. I downloaded this one here. And back into Photoshop, what we want to do is we want to go to File and we want to place that grunge texture, place embedded. That will make it part of the document find your grunge texture and place it in there. Make sure it's on top, all right, so it comes in at the top layer. If it doesn't, just drag the layer up the top and let's just put this on top like that. Double click to set it or press enter. And what we'll now do is we want to change the blending mode so that it blends with all the layers below it. So um, you can start with darken and then you can see now the image pops back because this layer's blending with everything below. Um, play around with the opacity. Um, really, at this this is all you really need to do. Play around with the blending modes and the opacity, all right, to get something that suits your image to make it look like it's got a bit of this texture, grungy look to it. Um, now, I was playing around with it before and Vivid Light works good for this type of grunge because I get this kind of redness going on here, um, which to me, it looked exactly like something that you would find on a wall uh, as a stencil, piece of stencil graffiti art. Um, so you play around with the opacity and there you have it. That's all you need to do. Um, the next thing you can do is grab the text tool and click anywhere in the image, create a new text layer and write some text. I'm just gonna write the word hey here. Now I'm just gonna position it a bit better so we can see it. I might zoom in a little bit. Um, now, if you can't see your character panels here, just go into window and choose character and that will bring these up. Um, and you can play around with the size of your text. Now, for what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a bit of a distressed look on here with a paintbrush so that it looks like it's faded and, and jagged and more part of the image. So um, play around with the sizing. You know, you might play around with the spacing between the letters if you like, but I, Mine's looking pretty good there. Um, you can make it bold. Try to choose a font that's quite fat so that you can see the effect that we're about to do take place a bit better. Um, so, and this font here actually looks like a kind of something that you would spray paint with a stencil. Okay, so it would work quite well with this, the rest of the image. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit here. Uh, might make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. Let's go up to about 300 or so. And now grab the, first of all, actually create a layer mask, okay? And we're going to paint on this layer mask. Now make sure here you've got black paint selected because if I remember correctly, black paint will uh, mask out or hide parts of the image. Okay, so now let's go to our paintbrush and make sure your brushes panel are activated. Again, if you can't see it, go to brushes and they will come up. Now. Um, in the brushes panel, I've chosen, and you can probably choose this brush here, Kyle's Ultimate Pastel Palooza. If you select that one, it's um, you'll notice if I go over here, it's quite a jaggedy, uh, it's kind of speckled kind of a brush, and I can make it bigger and smaller like that, okay? Um, go to brush settings and put the jitter up a little bit, and what that is going to do is it's just going to, every time I click, it's going to kind of move um, rotate the shape of the brush so that it's not looking all the same. All right, so now that we've got it set up, I might just undo those two that I did. All right, you're just going to need to, um, I've got the opacity of the brush set to 100%. Just click around here and you can kind of make this distressed look of your text so that it looks like it's kind of faded and worn and it fits in with the rest of the um, the image. Now you could play around with the opacity of the brush itself. So I might go to give it a bit 
less of a strong effect over here to make it look a bit more realistic. I um, might go back up to 100% and go a bit more in here, a little bit there. I mean, you can play with it to your heart's content, but you get the idea. So if I zoom out, now it looks like it's a bit more a part of this image and suits it a bit better. Um, the other thing is I want it to take on the colour of this yellow. So what we can do is we can just change the order of the layer so that these adjustment layers, the colour ones, will start to affect it. So just click, hold and drag it under, oops, underneath. And it also will take on the um, grunge texture as well. So I don't need, think I need to go past the threshold layer. No, I do. All right, and then you can kind of move it around and position it. If you think it's too small, you could change the size of it again. Um, so yeah, so there you have it. So there's how you can add a grunge texture and some grungy text to your retro style poster.